Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another book reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today we'll be reading the final in the Real Berenzia series, The Real Berenzia Part 10. And I know I keep forgetting to say the, the author's name, although in the book it says it's uh, anonymous. It is actually Plintinius Meadow. Alright, very well. So let us begin. The final story, the final chapter, in the real Berenzia saga. Berenzia stood at the open tower, waiting. She could sense her familiar's, near, familiar's nearness. But though the night sky was clear as day to her eyes, she could not see him. Then, suddenly he was there, a swift moving dot beneath the wispy night clouds. A few more minutes and a great night hawk was there. Wings folded, talons reaching for her thick leather armband. She carried the bird to its perch. Wait, uh, do we skip something here? Uh, these books seem to skip a whole bunch of stuff. But whatever. She carried the bird to its perch where it waited, panting while her impatient fingers felt for the message secured in a capsule on one leg. It drank, then ruffled its feathers and began to preen, secure in her presence. A tiny part of her consciousness shared this satisfaction with a job well done, rest earned. Yet beneath that was an unease. Things were not right, even to its bird mind. Her fingers shook as she unfolded the thin sheet and poured over the sheet of cramped writing. Not Schmuckus' bold hand. Ranzia sat slowly, fingers smoothing the doctor document while she prepared her mind and body to uh, accept disaster, calamity. The Imperial Guards had deserted Schmuckus and join the rebels. Oh no. The loyal troops had suffered... Wait, the Imperial Guards... The Imperial Guards joined the rebels? The loyal troops had suffered a decisive defeat. The rebel leader had been recognized as King of Morrowind by the Emperor. What? Schmeckus was dead. Oh! Grandi and the children had been declared traitors of the Empire and a price set on their heads. My lady? Ranzia jumped, <laughs> startled at her servant's approach. The Breton is here, King Edouard, the woman added helpfully, noting Ranzia's puzzlement. Is that news, my lady? She said, nodding at the Nighthawk. Nothing that will not wait, Ranzia said quickly. See to the bird. King Edouard greeted her gravely and courteously. Oh, shut down. Uh, King Edward greeted, greeted her gravely, gravely and courteously, if rather few, fulsomely. Yeah, okay, fulsomely. He claimed to be a great admirer. We're not there yet. Shit. More, uh, he claimed to be a great admirer of Schmackus, who figured prominently in his family legends. Gradually, he turned the conversation to her. Uh, to her business with the Emperor. Finding her non-committal, he suddenly blurted out, My Lady Queen, you must believe me. The man posing as the Emperor is an imposter. I know it sounds mad, but I... No! Grenzia said with sudden decisiveness. You are correct, I know. Edouard relaxed back into his seat for the first time. Eyes shrewd. You know? You're not just humouring a madman? My Lady, I... We need your aid. Renzia smiled grimly at the irony. Of what ex assistance might I be, my lord? Quickly, he outlined a plot. The Imperial sorceress, Ria Silman, Sil Silmane, had been killed and declared a traitor by the false emperor. Yet, she remained a bit of her power and could yet contact a few of those she had known well on the mortal plane. Oh my god, are they setting this up? That freaking Berenzi is like the person that 
uh, allows the champion of um, the eternal champion of the first game to actually do his stuff. Oh, it is true. Ah, oh, it's awesome. Ah, oh, it's coming back. This is like fucking. This is this is what fucking Metal Gear Solid Five was supposed to be, like bringing it back. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, where were we? Where were we? Actually, that's a good question. Uh, because of the because the girls ran out of the false separate. Yet she returned a bit of power and could yet contact those who she had known well on the mortal plane. She had chosen a champion who could undertake uh, to assemble the missing staff pieces and use the staff's power to destroy Jagathan, who was otherwise I invulnerable, and rescue the true emperor, who was being held prisoner in another plane. However, the chosen champion, champion languished now in the Imperial Dungeons. <gasps> She's going to be the one to go to the dungeons to put the key there? The key that you used to open the first dungeon? The, the, the first... Oh, that's awesome! So, oh, this is awesome! Hang on, shut up. Come down. Sorry. Come down. Zion's attention must be diverted while he freed himself with Rhea's help. Brandia had Zion's ear and eye. Could she provide the necessary distraction? Ah, oh, that's gross. Brandia has to fucking do Jagathan. I suppose I could obtain another audience with him. Would that be sufficient? What do you mean, his eye? Edwell looked uncomfortable. It was whispered among the servants that Jagathan kept your likeness in a sort of shrine in his chambers. That surprises you? Yes and no. Your cho our chosen one may need a few days to escape. You trust me in this? Why? We are desperate, my lady. We have no choice, but yes, I do trust you. Schmackus is dead, Brandy explained quickly and coolly. My lady, what dreadful news! For the first time, uh, uh, Edwea's un ur urbane pose was shaken under the circumstances. We can hardly ask. Nay, my lord king, under the circumstances, I must do what I may to avenge myself upon the murder of my children's father. In return, so I guess Schmuckers got fucked in the end. Yeah. He did. He got fucked in the end. But, but he had a, he had a decent life. Yeah. In return, I ask only that you protect my orphan children as you may. Most willingly do I so pledge, most brave and noble lady. Is Edward, is Edward the king of Wayrest? I think so. So they must have got married later. Is he married now? I guess not. Uh, old fool, Brainsia thought. She did not sleep that night, but sat in a chair beside her bed, hands folded on her lap thinking long, deep thoughts. She would not tell the children, not yet, not until she must. She had no need to seek another audience with the Emperor, for a summons came in the morning. She told the children she expected to be gone a few days, bade them give the servants no trouble, and kiss them goodbye. Morgaya whimpered a bit, for she was bored and lonely in the Imperial City. Helseth looked dour? but said nothing. He was very like his father. At the palace, Branzia was escorted not into the great hall, but to a small parlour where the emperor sat at a solitary breakfast. He nodded a greeting and waved his hand out of the window. Splendid view, isn't it? Branzia stared out over the towers of the great city. It dawned on her that this was the very chamber where she'd first met Tiber Septum, and a strong wave of... Oh, look at that word up. So I know I've already said that, like, it's amazing how these stories are, like, making me learn all these new words. Uh, but it's also amazing how my, uh, the predictive, uh, the swipe thing on my smartphone is smart enough to, to actually be able to spell that word. In, well, how do you say the word? Hang on. In Kuwait. Which means just begun or not fully formed. Makes sense. A strong wave of inchoate feeling swept over her. When she turned back... I just gotta make sure that sounds right. Because yeah, I'm, I'm anxious that I fucked up something. Uh, <clears throat> when she turned back, uh, at last, Uriel Septim had vanished. A nightingale sat in his place, laughing. Wait, say that again? 
the song. Song Raven kind of feelings for Dolly. When she turned back at last, there was a blue mask. Oh. Oh, he's. Wait, go back? Oh, okay, so she's she's there with the Emperor. Okay, right, right, right. So, Nightingale. So, wait, so Jagathine is Nightingale? I, I guess? Isn't Nightingale, like, part of the Skyrim's, uh, Thieves Guild quest? I'm gonna look it up. God damn it. Just keep pausing the video. Just do it. Oh, no, I was wrong. The Nightingales were the, the secret group of, uh, the Thieves Guild. And you can get the Nightingale armor, which looked really cool. Ah, uh, yeah, so this is different. Okay, right. Where was I? You knew? He said accusingly, scanning her face. I wanted to surprise you. You might at least pretend. Renzia spread her arms. I'm afraid my skills of pretense are no match for yours, my liege. You're angry with me, he pretended to pant. Just a little, she said icily. I do find the betrayal offensive. How human of you. What do you want of me? He wiped his mouth and stood erect. Oh, um... Uh... Sorry? <laughs> no, I don't think that's what you meant. Yeah, I know. Now you, are, now you are pretending. You know what I want of you, my love. You want to tantalize and torment me? Go ahead, I'm in your power. No, 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 no. I don't want that at all, Baranzia. He came near, speaking low in the old, caressing voice that sent shivers over her body. Don't you see? This was the only way. His hands closed on her arms. But you could have taken me with you. Tears gathered in her, uh, her eyes. He shook his head. I didn't have the power. Ah, but now. Now I have it all. Mine to have. Mine to share. With you. He raised his hand towards the window. And the city beyond. All Tamriel to lay at your feet. And that is only the beginning. Wait, why? Why is she? No, because... Do you not forget two books ago? When they worked together to, to, to actually get the staff on the mine? Oh, but he was just tricking her. It's too late. Too late. You left me to him. He's dead. A scant few years. What does it matter? The children. I'll adopt them. We'll have others together. Marenzia. I have powers you do not dream of. He moved to kiss her, but she slipped his graft and turned away. I don't believe you. You do, you know. You're still angry, that's all. The smile did not reach his eyes. What do you want? I'm really having a hard time figuring out who's talking. I know, right? Now, now it's uh, Brenzi. Yes, she shrugged. A walk in the garden. A song or two. Ah, you want to be courted. Why not? You do it so well. It's been long since I've had the pleasure. And so they spent the days in courtship. Walking, talking, and singing and laughing together. While the Empire's business was left to underlings. I'd like to see the staff, Brenzi said idly one day. I only had a glimpse of it. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Heart's delight. But that's impossible. You don't trust me? Bronzo pouted. But she softened her lips to his kiss. For his kiss. Nonsense, love. It isn't here, in fact. It isn't anywhere. He laughed and kissed her again softly. Now you're talking in riddles again. I want to see it. You can't, ha you can't have destroyed it. Ah, uh, you've gained in wisdom since we last met. You piqued my interest somewhat. The staff cannot be destroyed, and it cannot be removed from Tamriel, not without the dire, the direst consequences to the land itself. Ah, all true. And yet, as I said, it isn't anyway. Can you solve the riddle? I can. It's, it's all over Tamriel. He pulled her to him, and she le leaned into his, into his embrace. Here's a greater riddle still, he whispered. How to make one of two. What? That I can and will show you. 
Their bodies merged, limbs tangled together. Ugh. Later, when they'd drawn a bit apart and dozed, she thought sleepily, one of two, two of one, three of two. What cannot be destroyed or banished might be split apart, perhaps. Nightingale kept a diary. Described entries. Why would he keep a diary? That's stupid! If anyone reads it, he's fucked! He scribbled entries in it each night after quick reports from his underlings. It was locked. Oh, okay. But the lock was a simple one. Well, pff, come on! So Baranzio managed to sneak quick looks at it while he was occupied in toileting himself. Ugh. She discovered that the first staff piece was hidden in an ancient dwarven mine called Fang Lair. Yes, in uh, Hammerfell, which I don't think we can actually get to in this game. No, we can't. Although its location was given only in vague terms. The diary was crammed. Actually, now that I think about it, where do you. Where, what's the place that we go to in. Uh, in. Uh, High Rock? Is it available in Daggerfall? I wouldn't mind going there. Anyway, uh, it's like she was given only in vague terms. The diary was crammed with jotted events of an odd shorthand and was very hard to decipher. All Tamriel, she thought. In his hands and mine, and more perhaps, and yet. For all his surface charm, there was a cold emptiness where his heart should have been. An empty. Uh, <laughs> damn it. An emptiness of which he was quite unaware, she thought. One could glimpse it now and then, when his eyes would go blank and hard. Pleasant dreams, Baranzia thought and straw flashed before her eyes, looking sad, and then Theris with a mocking smile and empty eye sockets. Schmackus, who did what must be done, quietly and efficiently, Nightingale, Nightingale, who would rule all and more, and yet spread chaos in the name of control. Berenzia got reluctant, well, Berenzia got reluctant leave from Nightingale to go to her children, who had been told of their father's death and of the Emperor's offer for his protection to them. Edwire called on them while she was there, and she told him what he had discovered so far, and explained that she must return a while yet, and learn more as she could. I mean, learn as much as she could. Same difference. Nightingale teased her about her elderly admirer. He was quite unaware of Elderware's suspicion. Although, as he said, no one took the old fool seriously. Ranzia managed to arrange a reconciliation of sorts between them. Edouard publicly recanted his suspicion, of, and his old friend forgave him. Thus, he was invited to dine with them at least once a week. The children liked Edouard, even Helseth, who disapproved of his mother's liaison with the Emperor, and consequently, de consequently detested Nightingale. He had become sorely and temperamental and frequently quarreled with both of them. Wait, who's Nightingale? Wait, who's Nightingale to, to Helseth? Edouard was not happy either, and Nightingale delighted in publicly displaying his affection for Berenzio. They could not marry, of course, for Uriel Septim was already married. He had exiled the true Empress shortly after taking Septim's place, but had not dared to harm her. She was held by the Temple of the One. Uh, it had been given out publicly that she was in ill health, and rumours had been circulated that she had mental problems. The Emperor's children had also been dispatched to various prisons disguised as schools. That's a bit fucking rough. She'll grow worse in time, Nightingale said carelessly, eyeing Berenzia's swollen breasts and belly with satisfaction. Gross. <laughs> as for his children, well, life is full of hazards, isn't it? We'll be married. Your children, your child will be my true heir. Uh, he did want the child. Branzia was sure of that. She was far less sure of his feelings for her. They quarreled often violently, usually about Helseth. 
whom he wanted to send away to school. Ranzia made no effort to avoid these quarrels. Nightingale had no interest in a peaceful life, and he thoroughly enjoyed making up afterwards. So, I always had this this idea in Arena that just uh, Jagathan was just this just chode, just sitting on the throne all day, pretty much doing nothing. But he was he was getting on with uh, with Brands here. Well, this isn't like real fiction. I mean, this isn't this isn't real. This is a story. Well, according to Brands there's a, there's a mission in the game where you have to find. I think that you know the, the, you remember the the book that had the watcher shit with the with the Khajiit. I think she wants like to find that book and like destroy it. Too late. I've already read it. Um, where was I? Occasionally, so you actually keep that book. Yes, thank you. Don't throw. Maybe I should keep all the books. I shouldn't have read these books first, then. No, you shouldn't have. Shit. But yeah, I will keep these books. I'm just gonna have to remember that I've already read these ones. Hopefully, I will. Anyway. Uh, occasionally, Branzio would take the children and retreat to their old apartment, declaring she wanted no more to do with him. Oh, last page. Oh, God, last page. It's the last page. Okay, shut up. I'm gonna pause and uh, recuperate a little bit. Okay. She was six months pregnant before she finally deciphered the location of the last staff piece. An easy one, since every dark elf knew where Dagath Ur was. When next she quarreled with Nightingale, she simply left the city with Edouard, and they rode hard for Highwalk and Raywest. Yeah, okay. Nightingale was furious, but there was little he could do. His assassins were rather inept, and he dared not leave his seat of power to pursue them in person. Nor could he openly declare war on Raywest. He had no legitimate claim on her. On her unborn child. The nobility had disapproved of his liaison with Berenzia, and were glad that she was gone. She had gone. Wayrest was equally disapproving and distrustful of her, but Edward was much beloved by his prosperous little, prosperous little city. Prosperous? Yeah. No. Prosperous little city. And allowances were readily made for his entrance. Uh, you can do it. Eccentric. Eccentricities. Good enough. Brandy and Edward were married a year after the birth of her son by Jagathan. Edward doted on her. She did not love him. But she gave... But she was fond of him. And that was something. It was nice to have someone. And Wayrest was a very pleasant place. A good place for children to grow up. While they waited and hoped and prayed for their champion success on his long mission. That's me! I did that! Wait a second. Yes. Now I know who Helseth is! Helseth's the, the chode dark elf in the back room that sat on a table that I did a quest for and I failed. Remember? Oh my god, that's Helseth! Yeah, yeah, and... Yeah, yeah, and... Mo oh! Hang on. So, Brenzi and Edward had a son. No, no, sorry. Brenzi and Jagathan had a son. What was his name? Can we, can we find out? Let me pause. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find, well, I think I'll just fast travel. I'm just gonna fast travel to, um, to Wayrest. Uh, actually, I don't have a site that's just in Wayrest. And, uh, we're gonna go to the palace, and I wanna meet some of these people. Okay, cool. Little bonus, bonus bit. Okay, so here we are. We're in Wayrest. And here's the, here's the palace. Let's see. I've got no sound right now because I've turned the sound off for the book readings. That's fine. We don't need sound. It's taking an awful long time to load. Come on. Okay. Go to info mode for me. Who are you? 
Camera in particular. Right, so there's, there's, there's the Lady Brands here. Yeah, she's alright. Fuck, your daughter's hot though. More grey. There's Edward. Okay. And shit lips is in the back. What did you just call him? Oh, uh, you heard me. Uh huh. So who are you? Are you the one? Well, whoever... It was a daughter, wasn't it? I mean, it was a son, wasn't it? Who's this guy, anyway? You know what? I don't think it'll, it'll actually be an adult. Why not? Well, that last book happened when... How old was Helseth? I think she was eight. Oh, he would have grown up. Maybe it's this guy. That's just a little shitty also. Well, he would have a name, wouldn't he? Um, do you still have your, do you still have your book? Yeah, I got my book. Give me the book. Ugh, okay. Well, that was, uh... That was the the reading of the, the real Berenzia, in all its entirety. Um, so they were married. Um, a year after the birth of their son. Oh wait, uh, Edward doted on her, but she didn't. Oh, she didn't love him. That's interesting. Anyway, um, yada yada yada. Six months pregnant. Um, let me find out. Where does it stay? Um, it said it, it said it before that they were like how old they were the kids. Shit. Um, God damn it. Um, you're back at the beginning. I am. Um, I'm assuming it's here. It was in this book, or where was it? Yesterday's book. Maybe it was yesterday's book, actually. Yada yada yada, yada yada yada. Yada yada yada. Six months pregnant. Aside like for the last year, whatever. So she, she got the information that allowed me to, that, that, and then gave it to Rhea Silmine, and she gave it to me in dreams, that allowed me to find the staff piece to, so it was a team effort. Yeah, that's nice. Um, there is no, it doesn't say, but it was a son, nonetheless. Wouldn't have been you, obviously. Maybe it was. Uh, get my way, guards. Maybe it was uh, this guy. Maybe it was this guy. That wouldn't be that guy. We, he's a lord. Yeah. Garhart. What? Was there another person with that name? Uh, the the boy. Let's go house. Mm. Well, if there is if there is another baby there, another child there, then I don't know where he is. 
But I mean, if, if the end of the book was, in fact, she was eight and uh, Helsus was 15, then obviously a decent amount of time has passed. But, well, this was, this was before... Wait, when did this happen? This happened, like, at the beginning of Arena. So, at most, 15 years ago. Okay. Can I, can I just talk to these guys? I just want to have a chat. I'll talk to everyone. How do you... Wait, dialogue mode. Oh. A pleasure to see you again, a killer of mad wizards. So oh, I'm pretty good like that. Nice to see you got your headband on. How about the king? Yeah. So yeah, I'm in mean, good with these guys too. So it's cool. Um, except for Hellseth. Hellseth, like, thinks I'm an asshole. Well, Hellseth's an asshole, so. What about this chick? She's the mage. Yeah, okay. What about this guy? Just some guy. <laughs> what about this chick over here? Nope. What about this guy? That's a very realistic looking face. Compared to the other characters? Like... That's not too bad, but... Anyway, I think I'm done here. Yeah, I think we are done. Let's, can we be done now? I just want to talk to the guy in the middle. This portrait looks nothing like... What the... What the... It's, it's why it's a little boy, but this is weird. Anyway, uh, can I talk to the? No. Who are you? I am Elsania, King Edward's child, and uh, an heir apparent to the Wayrest. Perhaps you can help me out. Been embarrassing for doing months in your house, Lord Castellan. I, didn't I do this mission? Alright, so you're, you're a daughter. So that's irrelevant. Now, what have I done? Wait, do you still, do you guys have the same name? Nope, more field and more stun. God, I wish they wouldn't do that. Well, anyway, that, that quest isn't actually going to happen. Because, yeah, it's not. So, alright, well, when we come back, we hopefully... Uh, well, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> Either this uh, episode's going to come up, um, and then tomorrow we're going to actually be in uh, Sentinel, which is when I'm recording this, or this actually is being released way after, and I don't even know what's happening next. But, uh, yeah, until then, my name is Leo, and you are Barenzia, and we'll see you next time.